Niger's coup leaders have met with the new interim government. Now it comes as tensions are escalating between the junta and neighbouring countries. A 21-member cabinet was named hours before leaders of the West African bloc ECOWAS met on Thursday. The group announced a standby force which could intervene in the country if the military continue their hold on power. Thousands of coup supporters rallied against the decision in Niamey on Friday. Well, Emin Idris joins us now from Jibia on the border between Niger and Nigeria. And of course, tensions are increasing, uh, Emad, uh, with Niger and its neighbours. What's the situation like where you are as this news filters through? It's, it's, a, it's a tense situation for many people here. Uh, if I step out of the picture, for example, this is the boundary between uh, Nigeria and Niger. This used to be a very vibrant trade route between Nigeria and Niger. On a daily basis, uh, officials here are telling us that hundreds of cars cross this point to go into, uh, to come into Nigeria to take supplies and cross over into Niger. And some goods and passengers cross over from Niger into uh, Nigeria, into Nigeria. Now, we spoke with an official, high official, senior official here in Katsina State, which is the state bordering Niger Republic, and he told us that because of the concern of a possible airstrike, some Nigerians have moved inside Katsina State. This is an area that shares cultural and religious affinity uh, with the people in Niger here. So, a lot of people are worried that in case of airstrike, there will be a lot of problems. A lot of refugees will come into this area and there will be uh, problems with security as well. So it's a tense situation at the moment. And of course, we stepped to the market. We went to the market just a short while ago and we realized that the prices of commodities have just gone beyond the reach of uh, an ordinary Nigerian. I mean, I mean, you have touched on the fact of the sort of connectivity between the two countries, certainly in terms of trade. But there's a great deal of people-to-people -people contact here. Communities talk to each other. There's intermarriage, interrelationships and, and interfamily connections here. This is uh, a problem that could be exacerbated if the borders remain closed or if, as you say, the political tension continues to increase. Exactly. And that's already happening. We've noticed that already. And officials in the northern part of Nigeria that shares common boundaries with uh, Niger Republic are trying to douse tension. Unfortunately, the rhetoric coming from Niamey, from the military junta, is not helping. And that is whipping up sentiments against Nigeria uh, against Nigeria and Nigerians, because uh, they feel that the president of Nigeria leads the ECOWAS and they see ECOWAS in the president of Nigeria. So it's becoming more and more complicated. But again, when you speak to a lot of people, they don't believe that fighting will take will take place or will destroy centuries old traditions between the two people but with uh, ECOWAS uh, ramping up the rhetoric and also ramping up measures about security and possible invasion uh, people in Nigeria are still concerned that yes airstrikes and possible invasion may happen so it's a it's a huge problem and uh, we, we, we're noticing that a lot of people are really, really worried uh, about things developing this way here in Katsina State and across other states. Seven states, by the way, in the north of the country share common boundaries with the Niger Republic. And that's why when President Bola Tinubu went to the Senate seeking for its approval uh, for, to, launch, to send Nigeria's troops to Niger as part of ECOWAS uh, intervention force, there was total rejection from northern senators who form part of the, uh, f who come from this section that borders Nigeria and Niger. Of course, we'll continue to monitor what goes on in those border areas. For the moment, Emma Idris there in Jibia. Thank you.